fire code? Is it only reserved for Hollywood or does it operate in actual real life in business today? What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zipala here hailing to you from the Money Smart Movement headquarters here based out of Oak Brook, Illinois, of PHP Agency. I'm excited to be here with our good friends Chris and Evelyn Richardson based out of San Diego. And uh, listen, guys, uh, it was I believe it was May or June of 2015. We had just started implementing the strategy in our office called Phone Zone, where we'd sit down with our new guys on Monday nights to teach them how to use the phones, how to set up appointments, how to make a difference in the community as an entrepreneur, and start building on those skill sets. And in the middle of Phone Zone, I got a call from an old pal out of a former company called Transamerica WFG, Chris Richardson. I said, what, what, what's, what's Chris calling? Anyway, make a long story short, because uh, we competed um, in, in high-level training at that company uh, from afar. So it's now it's a pleasure to call him business partner because uh, just like myself, he has – where's my paperwork? He has stock ownership paperwork, right? He is an equity owner. He is an equity owner of PHP Agency. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Money Smart Show. Our good friends Chris and Evelyn Richardson. How you guys doing? How you doing, Matt? Great. Thank Matt. you for having us. Good to see you. So so cool to have both of you on the show too, as well. So uh, Kingdom of Heaven team is on the show. That's right. Good. So so Chris, let's let's talk about that real quick, brother. I mean, how, how long had you been part of financial services before uh, before you, uh, you and I actually had the official call? I was kind of embarrassing, man. I was in the industry. Uh, it was going on five years at that time. So if I had completed that year, it would have been five years. Really? No. So so you, so five years. And so uh, uh, talk to us about the challenges you had uh, as you started your career there. Okay. Well, uh, my biggest challenge was, you know, not coming from a military. I mean, not coming from a, a financial background. Of course, you're going to have that stumble that everybody has. That's normal. But the uh, combination of stumbling where you're trying to, you're in a big mix, a big company where you're trying to figure things out. You don't really have the details, the, the, the structure there. It wasn't there. You know, I always tell people it's like that story where the teacher whispers to the kid on her left ear and tells a story. And by the time it gets around the classroom, the story has changed a, a lot of times. <laughs> That's kind of how it was for me. So I was literally trying to find out what a system was and just got very hungry and starved over there doing so. It's awesome. And then, Evelyn, what was your career background? What was your involvement the last five, six years when he was attempting to get this financial business off the ground, too, as well? So uh, my career background is actually waitressing. I was a college student and I was waitressing when I met Chris. I was actually a single mom. My, mom, my daughter was about two and a half years old at the time. And um, I, when I met Chris, I met him on my first trip to San Diego. When I met him, it was a month after he got started in the, the, the previous company that we were in. So he was brand new in that company when I met him. Um, he had just got out of the military. And like I said myself, I was um, waitressing. So me not being from San Diego and living in San Diego, I didn't get to act for the first year. I didn't get to actively see what it was like, but I did see that he was on a, um, on a mission to just self-develop and grow. And I knew that there was something different about him just by the way that he would talk. So by the time I did move down here, um, I seen that there was a lot of value in the company that we were in. Um, I just, for some reason, I just didn't see a place for myself there. So what I what I chose to do was continue to work at my job, and um, I was just a supporting spouse for him for for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, this is the month of magnificent May. Mm -hmm. It's close that week for us, and I'm just looking at you guys' the numbers in business. You guys are coming across some new personal best records yeah. as, as, a, as an agency. Um, yeah. so, you know, before we talk and talk about that, um, uh, Evelyn, I'm, I'm going to go back to you here real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, when Chris decided to partner with me at PHP Agency and you decided to step up in your involvement in the business, take us through that process. So, you know, it was it was quite a scary transition because he was um, full time um, at the previous company and he still he's always has been since he started. Um, but a year prior, I had left my job. So I was I had left my job to to kind of be more of a stay at home mom. And at that time, I thought that that was my role. I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, but when he started talking to you and you put us on the phone with Patrick, um, 
I still, honestly, I was still wasn't really convinced because I knew you, I would go to conventions with Chris and the, pre the previous company. I knew you were a top recruiter, right? I heard yeah. the rumors about Patrick, he was top recruiter. So yeah. I would tell Chris, I'm like, you can't listen to Matt. He's a recruiter. He's supposed to say those things. <laughs> but it wasn't until you put me on the phone with Sheena really. And um, Sheena speaks with so much conviction. Um, and just hearing her story and hearing why she's in business and, and, and what she's doing it for, for her son, I related a lot to her because I know Jojo was about a year or two when you met him as well. And um, she didn't come from this industry. So she just inspired me immediately. And um, I told Chris, I'm like, I can see myself doing this because of Sheena. I can see myself doing something like this, even though I have no idea what it is we're doing here. I'm going to learn along the way. So once we made the decision to come on board, I seen throughout the entire company, there were so many couples, there were so many power couples, there were so many women with my background um, that were doing it. And I seen that the businesses were, um, everybody's business was growing because of it. So yeah, that was, that was, that's what it was for me. So when we did come into PHP, that's when I made the decision, I wanna do this, I wanna work alongside my husband and I'm gonna figure it out along the way. That's awesome. Chris, I'm 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 curious, brother. I mean, uh, one of the one of the steps, if you want to create more money in 2018, right? Just not with our business, but any business, is we have to step up our game in the area of sales, mm -hmm. the area of sales. So you obviously had to sell this to your wife, mm -hmm. right? Um, so so break break that down to us because oftentimes, uh, you know. One of the one of the most important things we can do as a recruiter, as a builder, as an entrepreneur, in terms of team building, is getting the other spouse on board with you. They may not be initially one hundred percent involved as Evelyn is right now, but emotionally speaking, because you guys sleep in, in that bed, you guys lay your, your head on the pillow that, that night, you wake up in the morning, and you don't want seeds of doubt rocking between the two of you and, and and really dividing into what were you? What was your conversation like with your wife? Uh, when you started going more full time and decided to make the transition to work with us at PHP and it, 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 it has to be an automatic emotional, spiritual conversation. And you kind of lead from a spiritual standpoint. You cannot try to lead from a logical standpoint because logically it doesn't make sense. You know, and uh, that's what I just kept speaking about. And I mean, that was what got us through, man. We had a lot of nights where, I mean, we fought. We had a lot of nights where, man, you were crying, just wishing you were in a better place to do more. <laughs> You know, but it, it had to all come from the from the heart. It had to all come from faith. It had nothing to do with logic. And uh, the the thing I give her so much credit for is that she became a crusader very very fast. I I think we had I've been in the company about two weeks and we had a white startup tour. And Patrick came out, and when Patrick came out and you came out, we actually got to know you. And we got a video. We just saw the video a little while ago, and it was so funny how our lives has transitioned since that time. You know. Yeah, and we it was just like, three years ago, man. It wasn't that yeah. long ago. And I mean, it looks like 10 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, she latched on so fast to the culture that she had become a crusader right from the beginning. And I would tell you, you probably want to ask that question to her. It became her who actually kind of had to be strong and say, this is what this this company is going to do it for us. Yeah. Just put your head down and work. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's talk about that, Evelyn. You know. You weren't full time with Chris at the previous company. And by the way, Chris, how much advancement have you gotten with PHP just in your first year? Not your third year, we're at right now, but how much advancement? I know you were telling me, man, I've advanced so much this year compared to my previous five years at that previous company. Okay, so maybe we don't go into actual numbers, but I, I doubled my income in one year coming over here for sure. Wow. Actually, more than double a lot. Um, the business started to slow down. You know how they talk about players that come from college and yeah. it takes them a while. And once they get to that right team and they get the right coaching, the yep. right offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, they said the game slows down. You know, the game started to slow down for me. It wasn't that deer in the hair likes kind of scenario anymore. It's awesome. Very good. Instead of thinking game, you're just playing game. Yeah. Yeah. But we exactly. operated on talent for a long time, only on talent. <laughs> And that, that's hey, right. Listen, uh, uh, Patrick said something yesterday to us. He says, systems and processes in leadership and willpower build companies. Talent entertains people. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you want to build a company, listen, you, think about it. People who are talented, they're only talented for, especially in their prime, 
uh -huh. just a period of their life. But if you want to build a company that lasts through 10 decades, generations, you got to build it on systems, you got to build it on processes, you got to build it on character, you got to build it on willpower. And um, uh, Evelyn, let's let's uh, let's throw that back to you. Um, were you ever full time with uh, with Chris at the previous company? What made you go full time with him now? Okay, so what made me go full time? Well, even attempt to then was I seen him losing his um, I wouldn't say drive, but his heart for it for what he was doing, and I seen him start to become something that I knew he wasn't, and I thought, okay. I know how, how much passion he and heart he has for this. Maybe if I step in and I help him and I help bring clarity to everything that's going on, maybe that'll make a difference. So um, when I gave it a shot right away, I was really like, um, I would say reluctant. And I just, I really, I was kind of operating blindly because even though I knew he had some success, um, I knew he had a team, I just couldn't see where I could fit in or what I could do. Like you hear the word system, system, system. And um, and this is not to bash the company, but I just had never seen it. And I'm like, well, what is the actual system? I hear the word, but what is it? I read the books I'm told to read, but what, like, what is missing here? Um, so when we came to PHP, um, even though we still didn't know a system. It's like there was, I seen more of a, op, a real operation happening and it seemed so simple. And I seen other couples, I seen people that looked like me. So a big, <laughs> a big thing that, a big thing that Chris left out is actually we were in an office that was about 95% um, um, Chinese. And it was Chris's mission to um, bring the culture and bring diversity. And he did do that with the team that he was building there. Um, but for me, being a spouse that um, had no involvement in business and tried to jump in, it was just really hard for me to identify myself with somebody. Coming into PHP, immediately I seen that. And that's what made me latch on. Because for me, it's like, if you can do it and we have the same background, there's no reason I can't. I just got to follow the steps you did, follow the system that is told, and we can do it. It's gonna. There's going to be some bumps in the road. I'm probably not going to get it right the first 10 times, but we're going to figure it out. And that's kind of where we are in this business right now, where I think we're figuring it out. And there's just so much more room for growth. That's awesome. And by the way, uh, congratulations, early congratulations. I know it's not completely official until the end of the month, but it uh, looks like you've got the minimum requirements to qualifying for a company paid trip to yeah. Cuba. So mm -hmm. uh, we look forward to uh, uh, So last year you guys qualified. We went to um, Cancun. Uh, Cancun, right? And then we just uh, last December – we spent some time in uh, Lake Tahoe together yeah. at the lodge. You know, it's not like it was a Motel yeah. 5, no Motel 6 mm -hmm. type of lodge. It was like the most expensive lodge on the side of the mountain in Lake Tahoe. I mean, PHP agency just spoils us that way. Yeah. Um, so, so, so let me ask you that. Let's talk about culture. So people mm -hmm. can be in financial services. People can have, have an insurance license. People can be working together in business. How important is it then? for culture to play a role in the success of your business together is vital you know uh as she was saying you know we didn't really have a a fighting chance being in a in a, in a team that was so um one-sided i would say you know and, and that's important to any type of company you're gonna have to create a, you have to create a lot of diversity and you even if you don't have the diversity you always have to have the vision of the company when it is diverse and you always have to have that model so when they come, it's plug and play. You know how they say you build it and they will come. Yeah. That has to be important. And culture, you know, in that scenario, it was a culture, but it wasn't a culture that was welcoming to all cultures. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, for absolutely. us, I mean, in our office that we have here, we have the age ranges from 18 to oh, man, man. Over, maybe maybe 50, <laughs> 50, over 50. We have a lot of couples. We have a lot of single people. It's just there's uh, we know that um, if someone walks in here, they're going to be able to relate to somebody. And that's important to us. And that's, I know that that is what it takes because that's what it took for me to be mm -hmm. sold out to working with my husband in business, because I needed to see that somebody like me, right. Single mom. I was, I was a young mom in college waitressing can have a fighting chance to have a career and be, be successful and be respected amongst their peers. So um, 
that's the culture that we create here in our office and all throughout PHP. So I believe it's a it it plays a big role in, in um, an entrepreneur's success. I love it. You know, when when we're talking about working with uh, a mindset of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and you know, Chris, I, I'm sure you've you've seen this more often in the insurance industry, in the financial industry, where you run across a guy or a gal that says, yeah, I just want to sell, but I don't want to build a team because I don't want to deal with babysitting people. And some people may look at you and say, well, they're building a team between 18 and 50. What do you say to somebody out there that says, you know what, I don't want to babysit people. Forget building a business. I just want to be, uh, you know, uh, self-employed or just, just, just be in sales and just worry about myself. What, what would you say to somebody out there that's watching this right now in terms of that mentality mm -hmm. versus becoming the actual business owner? Well, they have to really check themselves and realize, you know, what this country is all about. This country was not based on an imperialistic system. This company, this country was based on having the opportunity for everybody to succeed and grow. And if you look at communities in America, say you look at the Vietnamese culture, what industry do they dominate? They dominate the nail industry. Why isn't it a conglomerate? Because there's enough people in that community willing to teach other people how to be able to get in the business with all of the three things that's challenging from having the capital, the, the license that they need to, and the experience that they need to have. You look at the Mexican culture, you got landscaping, you got, you know, construction, you got I the top of shop, right? <laughs> right? And, and, it, and, it, and it comes from the heart when they're giving yeah. this out, and it can't come from selfish, you know, yeah. goals. And that's one of the things that we do here. A lot of people that I've seen do that, they fail. And when they fail, they're out of business themselves because they had nobody to back them up. They had no one to lift them up and there by themselves. So I would tell you, I wouldn't even really want to build a business where you don't have a team. And there's been a lot of times I, I would say, looking at my office, like if, if 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 things, you know, military talk, if things went wrong, I got a whole army with me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's what I would say. And, you know, as I look at these guys, um, just the things that you instilled in us is what we have to instill in those guys and this panic for it. You know, you're not going to be judged on how much money you made. You're going to be judged on how many lives that you gave the opportunity to change theirs. Man, success, it's just so much more gratifying when you um, are helping other people succeed and not just yourself. Like, yeah, it feels good when you reach a goal or a milestone. But when you see somebody else come from nothing to something and have them reach a goal, whatever it is, whether it's financially, spiritually or just physically, it's so much more gratifying as um as a leader to see that happen than it is for yourself. So with, with every married couple, I got, I got to ask this question, being a blended family and also having a child between the two of you guys and thank God your son looks like you, Evelyn, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so how do you guys fight? Right. Cause she, <laughs> she, she and I, we, 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 we have a process where there's friction but we've learned over time not to have a fight last a few days or worst case yeah. a week. Yeah. So you, how does going getting over arguments and not fighting and having your team feel that? Well, you uh, know, I'm think I'm I'm thankful for being in business with him because I feel like no matter what, everybody fights, right? Whether you work together or you don't. But I feel like the fact that we do work together and we have to see each other, like if we fight and we're mad at each other, we get over it so much quicker because we have to because it's like yeah. shoot we're not gonna make money if we don't like <laughs> we gotta get over it if i gotta go if i have to leave for a bit or if we whatever it is it, there's nothing ever big enough to stop us from from moving forward you know and um we over over time and over examples like yourself and sheena and other couples we've learned how to process things a lot quicker and we learn how to choose our battles you know um and ultimately we realize like we're one team you know we're not against each other we're not opponent opponents we're on the same team so maybe we just got to strategize a little bit better yeah, yeah. I, I, I was just talking about this uh statement i remember my mom saying is this lady uh george meyer she would say uh yeah one of the best ways to get out of an argument and settle everything is to say i think i'm right but i could be wrong and, <laughs> and in most cases Ooh, we're that's right, a good one we're wrong. One, 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 one more time chris um, it is the, it's, it's the process of stopping and saying, I think I'm right, but I could be wrong. It's powerful. Jo Joyce Meyer, for those of you guys who know, she's a very powerful, uh, very, very powerful minister, very powerful uh, pastor. And what a jacked up story she came from. <laughs> I know. Right? It's not like she was, everybody sees her as a perfect pastor preaching on stage 
you know, right? But she came from a jacked up uh, type of background. Let's, let's talk about that. Oftentimes people think, you know, you need to have a college degree or you need a perfect financial background or business background to get involved and be successful. You, you two are in San Diego. Now, you guys have your own office now. You moved from one office, from, remember, you moved into a brand new office. You know, the, 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 your, your uh, associate kind of gets bigger and bigger. More people are showing up. More people are attending. Um, what was it like for, for you, Evelyn, not to have any you – know, Chris had a little bit, but you had completely none – what would you say to people out there that says, you know, in order for me to good, be good in business with my husband in the insurance industry, I need to have experience? You absolutely don't. You, you yeah, you absolutely don't. I had, I had no experience. Like I said, I was um, a waitress. And it's funny because we have so many waitresses that come in and they, they, they try to put that limiting belief on themselves. Like, well, I have no background. And I'm like, hey, me too. I was just like you. I'm actually, I, I, I'm still learning. And if you ever feel like you know it all, then something's wrong. But um, for, for me, it was, I had a lot of fear in the beginning and I had a lot of doubt in myself. And um, it's so crucial to have a mentor. Um, and even if it's just through watching videos or through conference calls, um, even if it's not a direct mentor, it's, it's just so crucial because they're the example for you and they show you that it is possible. And um, it really just took me getting over my fears, developing myself and, um, just stumbling forward, you know, um, and you'll never have it figured out. I mean, I think even Chris, who did have more experience, it's always a learning process and it's fun. You know, it's 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 very satisfying for me to know that um, people are going to walk in here and have no background at all. And when I see someone like a Brandon Cortez, who is actually a server as well, and yeah. I see how he's perfected his skills and just by, you know, by, by, by committing to working and practicing and, 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 and going out there and, and stumbling forward, he's one of our best um, top people in our entire office. In, in fact, in the company, he's one of the top directors currently in the company. Um, but it just takes, um, I would say, blind faith, right? And um, just the courage to, 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 to go after it. Chris, you know, um, you've got a little bit of experience in the business, but when people look, when the traditional industry looks at PHP agency, and obviously we're getting some respect. How, how do we know we're getting some respect? Uh, this, is la this is last edition's um, insurance news net magazine. And our, our CEO um, was mentioned here on page 10. And there's a whole interview of him here on page 10 of Insurance News Network Magazine. Boom, right? That's our CEO of PHB Agency, okay? Um, Army background. Uh, first job was at Morgan Stanley, but that was uh, no, uh, September 10th, 2001, a day wow. before 9-11. Crazy. So, yeah, making a long story short, he stayed in the security side of things. And then this is this month's edition of Insurance News Net, okay? This is this month's edition of Insurance News Net. And on page 12, we got even more love from the from Insurance News Net magazine. Oh, by the way, who, who's, that, who's that beautiful couple there? Is this, <laughs> right? Right? Sucky, sucky now. So two, two, so two months in a row, and the traditional industry says we're recruiting people that typically would not ever been recruited. Yeah. And so the typical salesperson in our industry, ha you know, really has to fit a certain sales profile mm -hmm. to even have a shot in this business because it's either fill a quota or, or something like that. And you get fired uh, quickly. So what's it, what's it been like for you both to be recruiting and developing people commonly known as greenies mm -hmm. to be successful insurance agents in San Diego? And by the way, you're just not located in San Diego. You are across the country too, as well. So, what what has it been like for you both, husband and wife, couple power, business partners, to be building people from scratch who are like Brandon Cortez has no knowledge in the insurance industry, and then build them up. Next thing you know, they leave their job, and this is all they do full time now. I mean, yeah. Okay, so you know, uh, I, I, it's funny that you say that. I just had a lady in our office uh, last week from New York Life, a very prestigious lady, lived in Chicago at some point too. 
Well, she used to be, uh, I don't want to give her details. Let me not go up there. I'm, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take that back. But she actually says, uh, how does your dynamic work? I said, well, we will never compete with the people that you want. And we, you will never compete with the people that we want. We can bring a person in part time. We can bring a person in part time, almost like an Uber model. And you guys can, you're a career agent type of platform. And, and, and you guys do really well. And we do really well at what we do. And we actually look at recruiting just like an NFL team or NBA team looks at it. We're recruiting young and we're recruiting old. Now, of course, the young guys are going through the draft and NBA teams want them to be inexperienced so they can develop them properly. You know, yeah. I love uh, Nick Saban at, at Alabama because he says that when he went to college. You, you wouldn't. To, you wouldn't. Why would you say anything about Alabama? <laughs> you say, you know, when he was sitting at, um, in the mansion of Wayne Heisinger, the owner of the Dolphins, Wayne Heisinger said, what do you want to do? He says, you know, I want to do whatever you want me to do. I'm loyal to you. And the Wayne said, hey, look, I want you to be loyal to your passion. And what he told him is he says, you got to go back to your passion. And Nick Saban said that he realized at that point his passion was taking kids that were sitting on a on a, on a couch with their parents that didn't have the best living conditions and talking to the parents and say, hey, look, I can guarantee that he's going to be something. I'm going to develop him into something, no matter if he plays in the NFL or not. And that process is what he fell in love with. And he didn't get a lot of that in the NFL. You know, it was yeah. all about contracts. It was all about Nike contracts and things like that. And I love a video that I was watching. It's done, it's done a while ago. Patrick did it on Valuetainment. And he was talking about how you always recruit the believer over the resume. Mm. And we recruit the believers. We don't recruit the resume. And the believers, of course, the belief that they have is all they need is for you to develop that. So, yeah, you know, and the insurance industry is always recruiting the resume. Mm -hmm. they, go through, they go through rounds of they go through rounds of interviews, and uh, you know that that's really typically what they're looking for. Now let, let's talk let's talk about lifestyle. What's it been like for you guys as a couple power? This is all you guys do full time. Yeah. And, and one of the comments I made in a in a vlog I did last Sunday was that most married couples, when I was in the military, sadly got divorced. And and I'm finding that the divorce rate between the military is a lot higher than the normal divorce rate in the civilian world. And sadly, also, even in the church, the divorce rate is high. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, but I'm glad they're still going to church. I'd rather them go to church and give themselves a shot. And stand <laughs> together. But what's, what's the, here's the reality. And I got shots on this is that when husband and wife drop off the kids school or the kids get to school, Monday morning, wife goes here. Monday morning, husband goes here. Same thing Tuesday, same thing Wednesday. They get back together maybe for dinner for a couple hours. Yeah, maybe they sleep together in the same bed. Yeah, maybe they have to switch out parental activities and kids' activities or whatever the case may be, right? And hopefully they recover and see each other on the weekend. And so they do this for a year. They do this for five years. They do this for 10 years. And then the kids graduate, and then they're on their own, and then – 18, 20 years later, they look at each other like, well, who are you? So versus the dynamic of you both working every day together. Now, is it a bad thing that you guys are working together every day in business? Is it healthy? What's your perspective? Well, you know, you know, it, 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 I remember, you know, transitioning over here was a little tough. And I remember it was actually you who told me this. You say, hey, man, divorce is not an option. And I remember sitting there in Vegas and we were talking and that conversation always resonates in my head. Divorce is not an option. So for people out there, divorce is not an option. I remember someone saying it's not uh, about, you know, falling in, this, in love. It's about staying in love. Yeah. And, and that's where it is. And so the three things that most people don't have that we have that we work together is that most people that they, they separate and they're gone all throughout the day. They never get to see the strengths and the talents of their spouse. Yeah. And so all they see is the weaknesses because they're coming home. They have a little bit of time to actually mm. make life happen. And all that they see is the flaws. And they and they, they they tend to start to look at the flaws and all that they see is the flaws. And they say, why did I marry this person? You know, it's a and so thing and to, share, bro. to see the, the, the strengths, the talent, the, the God given talent that they were given. And that's one of the big things that you see. Other than that, you also see the fact that we help people focus on helping them getting financially successful. And where 
you know, you see a lot of people, biggest challenge in, in, in marriage is they fall out of love because of the money issues and they divorce because of the money issues. And then the third one, which is actually the lowest reason why people get a divorce is adultery. But the number one reason why people get adultery, I mean, have adultery, you know, create that environment is because you fall in love or you get attracted to seeing somebody go after their dream and work hard. And that's why you see a lot of that happening in the workplace. Yep. Yep. Exactly. You know, there, there's, uh, there's that term sometimes when it we're, you know, when, when, when I see our agents dealing with clients, sometimes they make flippant, uh, you know, uh, conversations like, yeah, this, this person, they're my, they're my office husband. <laughs> they're, they're my, they're my work <laughs> wife. Oh, God. I'm like, there should only be one husband. There's no word that should go before that outside of my, <laughs> yeah. right? There's no, the office husband, office wife, uh, your work husband, work. No, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, and Evan, what, what's, what's your take on that? So, you know, for me, you were talking a little bit about lifestyle. Um, for me, my, my, you know, my kids are everything and being able to drop off my daughter every day at school um, and, you know, spend time with my son in the morning before I come into the office and having the freedom, you know, this, this, um, business has given us the opportunity to actually move closer to our offices. So we're in prime location in San Diego, right? It's very nice. expensive to live in the area that we live in, but this business has allowed us to do it. So even when I am in the office, my son is just a five minute, uh, drive down the street. I can go drop by for lunch, go check on him. And, um, that to me is just, it, it, it's everything to me um, that I, I, I put above everything because being able to see my kids grow up means so much because me coming from a family where, you know, my mom had to work because, you know, she was, she was a single mom and, and, and she had to work. We never spent time with her. I had to play mom. I was, I was actually raising my sisters at 10 years old. And I look mm -hmm. at my daughter who's 10 years old now. And I'm like, she doesn't have to do any of the things that I used to do. Like she barely, you know, makes her bed. So yeah. um, that it's very special. It's very special for me just being able to have that time, have the freedom. That's the biggest thing for me is I can truly say I have freedom and I live my life on my own time. I love it. Now we, we, uh, we have a pretty big event coming up. And by the way, if you guys are just tuning in right now, thank you so much for joining the money smart show. I'm your host, money smart guy. And uh, Matt Zapala, but we, we, we have a convention coming up in August, August uh, 13, 14, uh, no, no, 14, 15, 16. And we're going to have uh, Kevin Hart. Boom. We're going to have Kevin Hart as our entertainment slash guest speaker at this annual convention at the Venetian. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Builder's Land Convention. Uh, what is it meant for you guys to, you know, like in churches, you got couples retreats or men's retreats and women's retreats. What's it like for you guys to have a business retreat, right? Where you have a, we have, we have a successful story and he's just not a funny guy. I mean, this guy, he, he wants to be a billionaire. Yeah. He, he, he wants, he wants to be a, he wants to be a mogul. We have a, we have a convention here. What does it mean for you guys just for you not to attend, but for you to also lead people in your national business to Las Vegas in August? Okay. Well, you know, um, it's a dream also. It's a dream come true. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, coming from where I came from, I always envisioned a company that would do things like this. And uh, I was told I was crazy. I was told <laughs> that didn't make any sense. You, you make no sense. I don't understand you. I understand that, but I don't understand that. And when we came to this company, I started to say, man, I, I guess I was crazy, but I joined uh, the ranks of a lot of crazy people. And so, you know, it's the crazy people that do things that no one has ever done. And we're setting records. I'm excited about this event. We want to rally as many people as that we as, as we can. And we're going for a record uh, ourselves. We want to have 300 at this event. Yeah, we know it changes people's lives. It changed my life. Um, you know, we have um, a lady on our team. Her name is Everlyn, right? And she's actually our first, she's our first broker. And she's out in Austin. She's running the Austin office. And um before she came into business, it was her spouse that was in business, Roberto. And I rem remember Roberto went to the company convention at that time, and he went without her. And he said, I'm going to go check it out, and I'll let you know how it is. He was so fired up when he got there. The first night, he called her, and he's like, you got to be here. You should be here. And she's like, what? You told me to stay. You know. And for us, it's so important to just get people there, because even though they don't 
they may not see it now we know the moment they get there they will feel the energy they will be inspired they will just i mean it it, it just explodes your business so um, it's very important to us that we take as many people as possible, even if we got to drag them, they're going. You have no excuses. When, yeah. when the company goes to bat for you and, and spend money and build relationships with the likes of yeah. Kevin Hart, it's like, yeah. you have no what excuse. What company does that? Who has Kevin Hart at their convention? Who? Yeah, I, I mean, mean who does? I mean, yeah. you guys have been around a minute. Chris, you, you've been in financial yeah. services. Have you ever seen a financial company bring in a speaker or entertainment as a superstar as a Kevin Hart? No, not at all. No, not at all. And, and it's, it's crazy. It's, it's just like I said, I mean, it's things that you would never think of in a, in a million years. Then we do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Patrick. You know, yeah. thanks to Patrick. Thanks to the leadership. They're forward thinking. And, um, you know, you know, we're moving. You know, it's going to be hard to catch up with this rate we're going. What, what Evelyn, I, I got to know, because, you know, women look at money differently than guys. What's it mm -hmm. like for you to know that you've got stock equity ownership? of PHV agency before we're a public company or before, you know, we, we, we potentially might get acquired. Well, what's it like for you to have the, to know that you have equity of this company, this agency that you're building? You know, I'm still grasping it. I keep telling him, <laughs> re redo the numbers for me. Show me again. Wait, what, <laughs> what is it? And it's, it's mind blowing. But for me, it's like, I've changed my family's life forever, you know, um, not just my kids, but my extended family, my my dad's who who's worked 40 plus years. Right. My mom, who's never had a new car, like their life is changed and we created a legacy for them because of it. And the fact that we have the opportunity to do that for as many people as we want, as long as they're they're willing to, you know, to to work hard and to not give up. That, I mean, it's it's so surreal. I, I Words can't describe. It's awesome, Chris. Chris, what is what's it like for you, man, to have equity ownership? I mean, I mean, Chris. I mean, you've been in financial services. I mean, uh, I, I don't hold this against you to have professional football players in the Green Bay <laughs> Packers be clients of yours. I mean, I've, I mean, you have to, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's it like? What's it like for you to know that you got not only a great opportunity to build a business, but you got equity stock ownership of our. You of know, our Two things. I thought I would have to make a lot of money some kind of way in this industry and eventually go find a company that was going to give us this kind of opportunity yeah. somewhere else in some other industry. Yeah. I never thought that I would be able to get the opportunity in the same industry that I'm in. And it's two birds being killed with one stone. And, you know, I had a conversation last Thursday. I'm in tears. I'm on the call with my dad. And it's the first time I broke the news to him. And my dad, out of everybody, anybody in my family going to hear this? My dad was probably the most positive person that I had in my family. I was in that corner. And I remember when we got down to our, our toughest, just words that my dad would, would say, the calls he would have. And um, I told him, I said, hey, man, we're about to get ready to have some fun in the next couple of years. And he said, don't, <laughs> don't play with me. I said, I'm not playing with you. I told you we were going to do these type of things. And I remember 2012 when I had just joined the other company, I asked him, like, what did he want? Then you don't have to feel like you got to do anything for me. And I said, but you are going to live and die in this country and never see what the world looks like. Don't you want to know what the world looks like? And for the first time, I had my dad lost for words. But he really didn't have anything to say. And so just last year, we started to do some real, like, mind-blowing things and things that it just doesn't happen in our family for him. And he started to dream a little bit because it's not just, you know, abstract. It's kind of concrete now. And so he's now started calling shots. Like, yeah, I would like the, I would like this car. I want the Mercedes Coupe. I want this. Dreaming I want that. Man. Right. And so you know, it's 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 crazy to know that I'm about to really like give my dad the best years he's ever lived in his life going forward. And you know, um, that's just thanks to the leadership. You know, you told me when I came here it was three things that we can get here: the opportunity that most people in America will never have, the leadership that most people in America will never have, right, and the vision that this company have it being shared. My vision has been stretched a lot. Very, 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 very far. And it's, it's so awesome to see you guys grow. What, as, as we wrap stuff up, guys, one last thought, one last thing that you would share to somebody right now. Because, you know, honey, you know, husband's watching this or wife watching this, you know, they say to each other, you know, honey, I want you to watch this video because I'm living paycheck to paycheck. We're struggling financially. Um, I mean, there's a recent report that here in, just in Illinois, and I can't imagine California is any much better, 
but people are leaving Illinois to surrounding states, still working here in Illinois, but they got to leave the state, Indiana, Wisconsin, Iowa, because they can't financially afford to stay in Illinois. Mm -hmm. And they're watching this right now. And if they're wondering why we live in paycheck to paycheck, because the cost of goods and services and cost of living is going up, but your paycheck isn't going up. What would you say to them right now? Says, you know what? Give entrepreneurship a shot. Give give, give this a stab. Work on a part time basis, or go you know, work together full time. What would you What would you say to somebody right now? They're struggling financially. They're going through some pain. What would you tell them? Yeah. Well, you know, um, you want to go? Okay. So you know, um, they say um, in the first five years, eighty percent of businesses fail, and um, overall, in 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 the, in the first ten years. 95% to 94%, 94 to 95% of businesses fail. So you want to start choosing the fact that you're going to have to be an entrepreneur to afford America's lifestyle, no matter where you go. I mean, you're just, you're just, it's like the, the, the Game of Thrones. You're just running from the night walkers. Eventually they're going to catch up with you. You got to figure <laughs> out that this thing is going to get you wherever you are. Cost of living goes up. Yes, last year, there was 75% of people in America that were paycheck to paycheck. This year is 78 percent of people that work are paycheck to paycheck. And because of the cost of living grows at that rate, it's going to continue. So next year is going to be 81 percent of people that are paycheck to paycheck. Year after that, 84 percent. What's going to happen? It's just going to continue to come, consistently come after you. So you got to choose that this may not be something you want to do, but you got to do what you got to do for your family. And then second part of that is choose the industry that has the biggest opportunity. And this one does. And I looked at this thing in 2011. And I was like, man, this is all I ever thought about ever since then is that I'm not only just going to be able to give my family an opportunity and create a legacy. I'm going to be able to really set history. And in addition to that, I'm going to be a part of the team that sets the record for helping the most people in America. And those are the things that are important. So if you're going to do something, go do something that's going to make a lot of money, do something that has a cause and do something that's going to set your family up for generations after generations. This is the only industry that's going to do that right now. I love it. What I would say to the women out there who maybe feel like, um, how do I start? Where, where, where do I start? I have no background. I have no experience. I, I would just say, you know, what are your options? You really got to look at what, what else are you going to do? Well, let's just say a person's 25 years old right now. And, um, you're going to go spend another 10 years, right? Trying to get into another field, build some other type of career. And where you, the way that, the way that jobs are, are expiring now, it's like you, you have no choice, like Chris said, but to get into entrepreneurship. And in a company like ours, um, you have what's, I mean, we're the, we're the, the women are dominating in our company. Yes. Right? You got, yes. you got people like Erica, um, Erica Aguilar, right? She came from a packing, a packing company. And packing, um, eggs. packing eggs, pack, packing eggs, you you have stay at home moms and and you just have so many examples out there of women that have the same fears that maybe some women watching this video right now currently have. And it really just takes just taking that that step forward and just doing it because the worst that can happen. What's the worst that can happen? You know, you're not going to trust me. You're not going to spend 10 years here and not do anything if you if you really put your head down and work. So. And that's a, that's a crazy thing that you mentioned there about money. I remember uh, in a financial literacy week uh, in 2009 that 60% of all wealth shifted into control of women in 2010. You know, mm -hmm. guys, you know guys would come on and say, oh, I, I make all the money, I make the decisions. But what do you think, honey? <laughs> you know, I mean, look, look at the stock market. The NASDAQ, the CEO is a woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. The New York Stock Exchange, the new appointee CEO is going to be a woman. You know, there, there, so there's a lot them. of women entering finance silently that a lot of a lot of people haven't uh, thought about this. This actually industry being and it's really an industry that's really built for a woman it because is. of the empathy and the listening skills that a woman naturally has that guys have to work on. That's mm -hmm. really good for the insurance industry. So, mm -hmm. but, uh, guys, you've been very generous with your time here during your close out week. Uh, hailing to me from San Diego, San Dog, mm -hmm. stopping ground. But uh, guys, if if you want to connect with Chris and Evelyn Richardson, we're going to be putting their links uh, to their profile. We're going to be tagging them in this profile because you're watching this right now on Facebook Live. Make sure that you connect with their story. If you're in San Diego or in Memphis, Tennessee, where where, where else is your other offices at? 
Well, I'm Austin. Everlyn is in Austin. Oh, it's Austin. Awesome. How can we forget Austin? Mm -hmm. Just relocated from San Diego to Austin, Texas. If you're in those Austin, Texas, Memphis, Tennessee, San Diego, California, and you would like to connect with Chris and Evelyn Richardson's business and outreach and their mentorship and guidance, click their links, send them a message and say, listen, how do I get down? How do I dance? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, listen, I, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank and uh, one of the greatest things that happened in my life is not only getting married, but also working together in business where you're just not making a living, but you're building a life. There's a great book out there that says one can set flight to 1,000, but two can set flight to 10,000. It doesn't make ma mathematical sense, but that's just what happens when husband and wife gets together and it builds something special together. Chris, Evelyn, honored to have on your show, and more importantly, glad to call you friends. Thank uh, you. Glad to call you guys business partners. Absolutely. We're, Thank we're, you. We're glad to call you guys mentors. If it wasn't for you guys, I don't know where we would be. And uh, we're still growing. We're growing to get better. As you guys get better, you are pulling us up. So we appreciate that. Yeah. You, you got it. By the way, Sherry wanted to remind us, St. Louis. St. Louis. And St. Louis. And St. Louis. Yep. That's right. <laughs> That's <laughs> really Absolutely. Very cool. All right. Well, everybody, if you're watching the show right now, if you want to get ahead in your life, you got to show yourself with people that want to know, know more, do more, think more, and be willing to have more. And that's why you got to stay connected. Like this page on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel to get insights on how you can live more money smart. That being said, on behalf of Chris and Evan Richardson and the Kingdom of Heaven team here at PHP Agency, until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Keep up. Right. Let's see you guys. God bless you. You too.